everyone. Welcome to week 11, 12 and 13 on the Starting Strength Novice Program. Now, sorry for not uploading for a couple of weeks, but I've been very busy. I've actually just had my graduation, so I've now graduated in uh, Nutritional Sciences and also it's an Exercise Science degree as well. Uh, so very happy with that. I actually got a first degree, so really, really happy. But of course, with that came a lot of um, celebration. So I've been out quite a few nights drinking. And actually on this week 13 of the program, I've actually been out for three nights in a row. So um, I'm just hitting the workout now. Uh, so as you can imagine, I've had quite a few hangovers, but um, I'm still getting my training done as best as I can. I have missed a few sessions and obviously the weights haven't gone up as good as he would have if I um, hadn't have done any uh, partying. But of course, as we talk about on this channel, you have to balance your life so if fitness is everything you live for that's fine okay if you, you just the dream is to become the best lifter ever the strongest guy okay fine go for it but for the average person out there and most of my audience on on here on youtube um we talk about how fitness should enhance your life not be your life so just do the best you can and as you as you'll see in these clips i've had to prioritize certain lifts uh, i could usually work out i had to miss a one or two sessions every week for the past three weeks so I've had to focus on my overhead press and the bench press has had to take a bit of a back seat, but that's fine um, because my overhead press is the weakest. Um, so I'd rather bring that up. And then when the time comes, when I get some free time, which should be the weeks uh, starting from now, uh, then I'll be able to, you know, focus on the bench as well. Uh, but just because you can't have the perfect schedule, the perfect program, doesn't mean you should just give up altogether. Even if you can only train once a week, and it's supposed to be three times a week, just do what you can. Try and hold on to some of that progress that you've made. It's going to make it a lot easier when you get the time to then train for three times a week, and you won't have to regress, you know what I mean? So, say if you had stopped 50 kilo overhead press, and you thought, ah, oh, well, for the next three weeks I'm going to be out partying, and you didn't do anything... You probably have to start back off at maybe 45 kilos, something like that. But if you manage to just get that one session a week, you'd probably be able to hold on to that 50 kilo overhead press. Okay. Um, so with that said, there's a few more developments uh, with the deadlift. Uh, you know, I've had to get some deadlift mats. So they're called Deadlift Deadner. The product, I'll give a review on it soon. I just need to experiment with it a bit more. But that's basically because it was ricocheting in the house, you see. Um, and it's causing a big racket. So with them mats, there's absolutely no like vibrations going through the house, which is really, really good. Um, so if any of you go to home gym and you're having issues with your deadlifts making, like basically wrecking your floor as well, um, then definitely these deadlift deadner mats is something that um, I would say you should look into. Like I say, there will be a review coming on them soon. Um, another thing to note, with them deadlift deadner mats and the platform I'm currently making so that I'm pulling from deadlift height, I am actually currently pulling from a slight deficit. So it's about a half an inch deficit, maybe a little more, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch, but it's definitely no more than that. Um, but you know, the deficit ultimately, although I have had to back the weight a little bit because of it, um, it's just going to make me stronger, greater range of motion. So very, you know, I can't complain. It's not all about weight. Sometimes that additional range of motion can help you out because when I go back to doing conventional dead deadlift from the floor, I probably find I'm a little bit stronger than my half inch deficit or whatever. Um, with that said, I'm going to crack on with my final set of week 13. I'm doing some of these weighted chin-ups, um, commonly known as sternum chin-ups. I've kind of thrown a curveball out there and called them full range chin-ups, but I know there's some mixed opinions on that. But either way, um, here's the final set. I'm trying it out. And for those of you who are saying just do the conventional chin-ups, I have done. I've done a 50 kilo chin-up in the past. That's the best I've done. Um, you know, very good rep, happy with it. It would definitely class as a chin-up. And I weighed about 70 kilos. So we're talking about 120 kilos total. Um, so we get a bit of experience with chin-ups, you know, already. It's not like I'm a total novice to them. Um, and all I can say is that a lot of people are under the impression that if I suddenly switched these um, regular chin-ups, that my back and biceps are going to blow up. Well, let me tell you, when I was doing like this 50 kilo chin and I'll flip in a clip after this of me doing 80 kilo um, isometric hold and negative, uh, my arms were not even 14 inches, okay? My arms are about 13 and a half inches, even with that strength. Obviously, I am quite a light guy, so you've got to factor that in. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes that can be down to genetics. So although a lot of you might look at me and think, oh, you know, Sam, you've got no physique development as such. Well, that's kind of my genetics playing a role. Now, I'm not using that as an excuse, and I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to keep progressing in strength, and obviously I will get bigger from that. But just recognize that 
I have a past beyond this, although my training's been, you know, a little wishy-washy and I've, you know, used a lot of bad programming in the past and it's not really been effective. I've gone around in quite a few circles. There have actually been times where I've actually progressed decently on a lift and I have some experience with that. Um, but I think that's all about all I've got to say. Um, so let's get on to the chin-ups and other bits and bobs that I want to talk about. I'll uh, give a voiceover over the rest of the training clips. So um, I'll pop the camera down and you can listen to some really cool non-copyright music for uh, this set of chin-ups. All right, guys. So you should be able to see there, I think. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So as you can see, about two and a half, two and a half, one and a quarter, and one and a quarter. That's seven and a half kilos. And although I've not managed to get in any chin-ups, I don't think for the past three weeks, I've still hit a two and a half kilo PR. Now, obviously, um, when I did my last set with five kilo chin-ups, I knew I had a bit more in the tank. I've talked about my prefix experience with chin-ups. So a lot of these gains are very neural gains, if you like. It's me just getting more efficient at this different style of pulling because it's kind of like hybrid horizontal vertical pull which makes it really interesting in my opinion um, so anyway let's get on with the rest of the training clips and let me let me know some feedback down below because ultimately these videos are for my own progress but they're also for you to enjoy for you to get inspired and motivated by because uh, I know a lot of people on YouTube obviously a lot of people on drugs and whatnot um, and even the good naturals out there, you only see the best of the best usually on YouTube, okay? You see people, you know, three plate bench, whatever, five plate squat, and all that can be motivating, it's not as realistic as seeing a true novice putting in the hard work um, with weights that you can relate to, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm not afraid to put myself out there. Uh, if anyone wants to talk shit, feel free, but just know that I really don't give a shit, okay? Um, you know, I'm on my own path, I'm on my own journey, I'm doing the best I can, and I just hope you enjoy the content. All right. Here's our 80 kilo isometric chin up that I was on about earlier, just so you know that I'm not lying. Um, you know, I have been quite strong at doing chin ups, like that 50 kilo chin up that I talked about, and isometrics and stuff, but you know, I still had under 14 inch arms, so that's just a point to think about. Um, take it as you will. Um, but anyway, just so you know that I'm not lying, there you go. All right, so here was the heaviest set of overhead press that I did throughout the past three weeks, and that was 52 and a half kilos for a set of five, which I was really happy with. However, on my next two sets, I only got four reps each, so I was a little shy of the three sets of five, but um, I'm sure that three sets of five with 52 and a half will be coming very soon. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I actually decided to focus on my overhead press over the past three weeks and I didn't really have time to do much benching. I think I got one bench session um, and I'm going to show that in a minute. Just did a bit of pause bench. But um, yeah, I'll just show you the weight on the bar now because I know it's a bit of a distance so it's quite hard to see. So I've got a 10 there, a 5 and a 1 and a quarter. Um, so that's 52 and a half. I guess you've got the clips as well, but I don't include them with any of my weight just in case you're interested. I know one or two people have asked. So yeah, uh, clips aren't included. But here, uh, it's only 70 kilos. Okay, so it's quite light. I have been benching heavier. I have been doing touch and go. Uh, this is back to a pause and it's quite a big pause as well. Um, but basically, I got a little injury uh, on my kind of... It was sort of in the kind of forearm, bicep a little bit, um, which you might not think would aggravate the uh, bench, but it did weirdly enough um, in the bottom position. So basically I had to take it nice and light um, and I found it was a lot worse when I did the touch and go, hence I switched back to pause bench. 
Um, I don't think this was anything to do with the benching. Uh, to be honest, I just had a bit of a crazy night, which I'll tell you all about later in the video, um, and picked up a few injuries. But um, yeah, so no, again, nothing to do with the bench, just an injury I picked up at the weekend. Anyway, these are going to be a few clips of the deadlift. Uh, this was These are all 125 kilos, and this was when I was still deadlifting from the floor. As I mentioned, I've stopped that now, but I think I got three reps with this set. So this was an all-time PR for me. Um, I have deadlifted heavier than this, but again, I was looking kind of like a banana when I did heavier weights. So I'm happy that I've got uh, this deadlift with a good uh, back position, you know what I mean? Um, so even though I didn't get the four or five, I was still happy to get three reps because, you know, it's PR. It's making me more confident handling 125 kilos on the deadlift. Um, so yeah, super happy with that. And I should see here, I try and go for another rep, but it's just not in the tank. But that's fine. A nice triple. Um, I did try and, you know, just take a couple of seconds, reset, try and get another rep. But really... Um, you know, once it's done, it's done. And to be honest, it's probably best that I got quite a powerful three reps rather than trying to get an extra grinder. Um, but you know, there you go, two fives and a two and a half. So these are deadlift deadness here that you can see in shot. And I'm stood on some wooden blocks to elevate my feet. Again, so it's a slight deficit this. I believe it's about um, half an inch to three quarters of an inch, something like that. Um, but yeah, I think I get four reps on this. Now, actually, the um, clip that you see after this, I did manage to get five reps. Um, I did this the day after, because I was actually gonna do my training session, start off with deadlift, and I only got four reps, and I was like, you know what, I can definitely do five reps, because the reason why I missed the lockout on the last rep was to do with my grip. I just couldn't grip the bar. I am doing double overhand, and I'm using quite a narrow grip, okay? So I'm not actually on any of the knurling, I'm actually gripping just inside of the knurling, so I'm gripping a smooth bar as well. So, you know, it's quite difficult, double overhand, smooth bar. Um, but yeah, it slips out of my hand, as you'll see there. Didn't quite lock it. Um, so what I did, the next day, um, you know, I know this isn't technically in the program, but I was like, I can definitely get five reps with this. Uh, so I switched to a hook grip. Uh, no, I know you can't see it, and I kind of messed up the angle a bit on this. But uh, yeah, I switched to a hook grip, and yeah, it does hurt your thumbs quite a lot. I've heard a lot of people complain about that, um, but it wasn't too, too bad. I know this is quite lightweight, so I imagine it gets a lot worse as it gets heavier. But um, yeah, I am going to be using hook grip, especially if I'm going to keep the uh, narrow grip on the smooth of the bar, because I'd probably be able to grip it with, if I was gripping the knurling, but gripping that smooth, uh, there's no way. So I'm using hook grip, managed to get the five reps. now. I am happy with my back position on this, um, but I feel like the technique was a bit sloppy. I feel like it obviously is more difficult pulling from the deficit and my mobility needs a bit of work. So I am working on that a lot um, for injury prevention, but also so I can you know perform these deficit deadlifts a bit better because uh, the spine is looking fairly neutral, but it's just not quite as crisp as when I was pulling from the floor, You know, not on a deficit. Uh, especially towards the top of the rep, it just doesn't quite look great. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna keep a strong guy on that and see how it goes as the weight progresses. Um, my mobility increases as well. Um, I think it's all gonna help. This is just a little contraption I've been building for the deadlift deadness. So you can see these planks of wood at the side. Uh, this is basically to stop the deadlift deadness moving. They have a lot of uh, give on the carpet, you know. Um, so I'm basically building this cage, it's not finished yet, so that the deadlift setup will be perfectly straight, the mats aren't going to move, and I ain't going to have to worry about that, because without that locked in place, you know, you've got to, when you set up for your deadlift, you're trying to roll the bar around to make sure it's exactly straight, um, and you know, it's not shifted over too much to one side or the other, um, but this should really help minimize that. But here was my heavy squat that I managed to get in, I, it was only a single, but I just thought, when I had the time to do it, you know, around all the different things that I've been doing. Um, just to check that I could still do 100 kilos and it's probably the best 100 kilos I've done with good form. Um, but now on screen, you can see how my week 11 and week 12 looked. Um, so as you can see, it was that weekend between the end of week 10 and the start of week 11 that I actually went out with an old friend of mine called Adam. He's actually been on one of the videos in the past. The video is no longer on YouTube, but um, 
did quite a bit of training with them in the past, but also I used to do breakdowns with them. So when we met up, we hadn't seen each other in a while. Uh, we ended up at this uh, kind of bar and they had like a dance floor. So, you know, uh, of course we tried to do some of our old breakdance moves that we haven't done in a long time. Um, you know, no warm up straight in there. And of course it didn't end very well, fueled by tequila. Um, so yeah, picked up a bit of injuries. Uh, especially my right hip flexor is, you know, I don't know what I did to it. I don't really have much recollection to be honest. Um, and on my kind of forearm bicep, um, on my right arm kind of really injured that a bit. So I couldn't train for week 11, day one and day two. On day three, I managed to do some lighter squats, um, you know, still relatively heavy, but you know, about 80%. Uh, my press was fine. I got a PR on that. That was working okay. And the deadlift was doing not too bad. It still wasn't feeling brilliant. Um, but you know, by the time it rolled over to week 12, I was feeling a lot better. I could actually do a bit of that bench, although it was a, a lot lighter because previously I was very close to 80 kilos. I believe it did 79 kilos, was touch and go. So just while I'm making sure that it's uh, bicep is feeling all right, I'm just gonna be doing pause bench uh, for a while. You know, it's all gonna carry over. I'm sure pause bench carries over to touch and go. I've experienced this myself. And I'm sure many people have. Um, of course, you can see that I did an RDL as well. And that was purely because I didn't want the deadlift to make a racket on the floor, like I was saying, it's ricocheting through the house. So yeah, I had to do an RDL there, uh, but not to worry. Um, what else is going on here? So we can see the press continually went up. And this is what I mean. I didn't have time to bench because I, I was away, out with friends, whatever it was, um, out somewhere, you know. So I had to just stick with the press and thought if I can actually try and improve the press, that'd be really good. Obviously the bench took a back seat, but I'm fine with that. Um, and as you can see, my squats are gradually getting heavier and heavier. Um, again, I finished off this week 13, just today actually, uh, with a 90 kilo squat for five reps, three sets, and it was feeling pretty good. My right hip flexor is like 90% better now, I believe. So hopefully going into week 14, I'll be able to really start pushing that squat back up and exceed the weights that I've done previously. Previously you saw me do 102.5 kilos for a set of four, I believe, um, or maybe even a set of five actually, but the technique would had some issues, my bar positioning was off, but now you'll hopefully have noticed in that 100 kilo single rep video that I just put on earlier, um, that my technique is looking a lot better, bar position is a lot better. Um, so let's hit some PRs on the squat in the upcoming week, and the deadlift and the press and the bench and all of that good stuff. Um, I have a good feeling that's gonna be a lot of PRs because I'm gonna have a bit of a straight run of training, I'm not really gonna be going out that much. So um, yeah, I've got a feeling the next week 14 and 15 are gonna be some really good weeks for training. And of course, Sam will be joining me in them who uh, appeared in the last video. So I'll keep you updated on his progress as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any feedback, please leave it down below and I'll see you all next time.